Okay, welcome to another prepared flight sim video. And in this video, we're going to continue our hop through the mountains of Colorado. In the uh, last hop, we went from some airport to uh, zero C02. And this time, we're going to go from uh, zero C02 to KTEX or KTEX. And I thought just to change things up a little bit, I would try to do the flight using um, VOR rather than just doing a direct flight by GPS. Uh, even though we have the more sophisticated G1000 instruments down here, so it's kind of a kind of a bit silly, I suppose, to be doing VOR, but we'll do it anyway. So I've done a little bit of pre-flight, or rather pre-video setup here. I've already got the navigation equipment set up, I believe. I've got the frequency tuned to 114.90, which is a VOR uh, HBU. And we're going to fly at a course of 182 to get to that VOR. So let me change the heading adjustment knob. Um, here, hang on. So 182. We'll brought that around too far. And then we'll change the course adjustment as well. Then we'll get in the air. It'll be a fairly short flight. And with any luck, we'll actually be able to land for a change. Haven't had too much success landing in the previous video. Something always goes wrong. We run into the trees, hop up and bounce and something goes wrong so hopefully we'll get it right this time okay so there I've got the course set to 182 so we should be all set so we're gonna fly for 24.4 nautical miles and then we should cross over that VOR and then from there we're gonna turn to 224 and we're gonna fly away from the VOR for 50 nautical miles the elevation of KTAX is just over 9,000 feet and the runways are uh, 9 and 27. It's a 6,858 foot long runway. And it does have ILS, so if we want we can do an ILS landing, but we'll probably just do visual. Okay. So let me straighten out the view just for takeoff, then I'll pan back down and we'll look at the instruments. Uh, flaps are up. Let me press uh, Shift Z, check the wind. I think all wind uh, weather conditions are cleared for this particular flight. So flaps are up, trim is set. Okay, let's just go ahead and roll and uh, if we need anything, we'll buy it on the way. So full throttle on the main. And we're at 35 knots, 40 knots. Try not to go off the runway. 60 knots. Ooh. And let's bank before we run off the runway. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Raise the landing gear right away. And you can see how steep those mountains are in front of us. So we're going to climb out pretty aggressively so we don't crash into the mountains. In fact, we might even, let me kind of pan the uh, camera around a bit. We need to turn to the left, but I think we might be better off banking to the right. It's pretty steep mountains here we're climbing out. Yeah, I think we're going to be better off banking to the left. So we'll kind of go around the long way. I'm just afraid if we have bank over to the right, we're not going to clear all that. You can just see off the wingtip there how high all that stuff is. Back off the trim, elevator trim a bit so we don't uh, stall or anything. Actually, rather than banking to the right, I think what I'll do is I'll just climb out until I'm over top of what's in front of me. And then I'll bank to the left, which is going to be south. 
that's the direction we need to go. So because if I bank to the right, we're gonna have to go kind of go way out and turn around and come back. And it looks like we're gonna clear this stuff without any problem. And it won't take long to get over to the VLR. It's only 20 nautical miles. Let's go ahead and start banking to the left now. Try to get on course. That's pretty steep, even still. Can't imagine that we're more than, you know, just a few dozen feet off the ground at this point. But I believe this airplane has plenty of power to pull through all this. Okay, yeah, we're going to be clear of all everything. All right, now let's uh, get on course. Rather than flying kind of to the southeast to get on course, I think I'll just readjust the course knob. Let's finish our turn first. And I don't want to really climb any higher than I have to, because then we'll just have to descend pretty far. So I think we are good on altitude. Once we got up over that steep valley there, right at the end of the runway. So we'll kind of uh, keep banking to the south first. So I'll just kind of start taking out elevator trim just to get everything level. Because I believe the highest peak between the two airports was probably right there at the uh, right there at the runway. Because out in front of me I don't see anything that looks really steep. Okay, we got a heading now of about 187, so let's just go back to level flight for a moment. And let's readjust our course knob so that we can get on course with, uh, with the VOR. See if I'm doing it right. That's too far. Okay, so now we need to bank to a heading of 154, apparently. Take out some more trim, because we're still climbing. Though careful not to uh, overdo it and descend, because then we could potentially overspeed as well. And again, uh, it does look like we're overspeeding in the G1000 display, but as I explained in some other video, uh, that's just incorrect. I was actually hoping that there would be the release of uh, Prepared V2.05 before I started recording uh, the next leg of the journey, but it's, it's uh, January 9th today, and there's still no update on the, on the website for the new version of... Uh, prepared so I'm still continuing just to use 2.0 which is plagued with several problems uh, causes crashes to desktop and other problems but it's it seems like it seems like you can work around all of it uh, you just have to know what not to do basically like if you go to flights and you go to the flight planner um, that's gonna cause a crash to desktop and if you set up a default flight and try to load it uh, as soon as you load prepared that'll typically cause a crash so basically you just have to keep the defaults as they are then once the scenario once the simulator started then you have to load your own flight after it's already started which is kind of inconvenient because you know it takes a while to load all the terrain and everything 
So once it's done loading, then you just have to turn around and load a different scenario. So it has to reload all the new terrain for the new scenario, so it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but hopefully they'll get that all taken care of here soon with the uh, new version. Okay, anyway, let me pay attention to uh, to my heading. And actually, I need to pay attention to how far I am from the VOR. I thought I set that up on the GPS. What's the deal? Or not on the GPS, but on the G1000. It's still giving me the distance to the the other airport that's in Florida. Um, hmm. Because it has that as the waypoint. Okay, so while I'm in this flight, let me get on get banked to the left a little bit so I don't get off course. So while I'm in this flight, I'm going to have to fiddle with the uh, with the G1000 instruments to try to get the waypoint correct. I thought when I put in the frequency and loaded it that it would automatically set that as the waypoint, but I guess not. Okay, so what we need to do then... Adjust my trim a bit so I don't climb. Adjust my trim so I don't descend. Boy, this is worse than texting and driving, which I don't do, by the way, but trying to set this GPS up while I'm flying is pretty inconvenient. So I don't... Okay, so I'm going to set the VOR Okay, now I should have that set And the distance is now getting greater, so I must have just flown over it. Let me actually change the... Okay, alright, so we need to ch change our heading then to 224. So let's make that adjustment here. set the course to 224 that's going to be 224 away from that VOR okay so now let's bank toward that direction and let's bank pretty aggressively since we were late we're past the VOR by five kilometer five nautical miles now put in a bit of up elevator trim so we don't descend through this uh, turn and controlling the altitude is a lot easier now that I've got my SciTech trim wheel set up Okay, we're passing the uh, 224. No, we're not yet. Yeah, we're we're past the heading, but that's what we need to do because we need to fly toward the west a bit farther to catch up to the course. 
taking out some of that elevator trim now. Actually, I think I'll throttle back and let myself descend a bit because I'm at 15,000. And the, the uh, airport's 9,000, so I've got to descend uh, 6,000 feet before I get over there. So I'm going to start descending a bit now. Just not too much. Because these mountains, you know, they're not very far down. Boy, that's pretty. And I like the reflections off the glass. If you notice, you can kind of see, you know, the glass reflection there a bit. Okay, we haven't caught up to the course yet. We're 11 nautical miles out from the from the VOR and we need to fly 50 nautical miles away from that VOR of course we need to be in a straight line but we'll catch up to the uh, course here momentarily Let's see it down here be clear Um, how do I shut this off? I don't know. Okay, we're catching up to the course. I can see that, so let's bank over now. So we want a heading now of about 224. That should put us in line with the... VOR between the VOR and the uh, destination airport. And then we'll get ourselves set up for some kind of landing. Okay, that's enough on the bank for now because we're still not quite in line. How do I get rid of this? There we go. Looking down at the GPS just to clear some of the data that's up there that doesn't mean anything. There's the uh, VOR back there. And I'm not going to get that. I need to answer it actually, but I'll finish the flight and call that person back. It's my lung transplant coordinator. <laughs> I was at the hospital this morning. I had another bronchoscopy. I really hate those things. And I had to get another CT scan where they inject contrast into your veins and it's not fun. I just had a CT scan Tuesday, but apparently the results were inconclusive, whatever that means. So they had to do another one today. Anyway. I actually have some kind of problem with my right uh, airway that the bronchial tube, I think it's called, that goes into the right side, is it's seized up. So I'm actually not getting hardly any air into the right lung. And kind of noticed lately that I haven't been breathing as well as I was, so something's going on there. Not sure what they're going to do about that. Maybe put a stent in or something to open up that airway. I don't know. Okay, we're on course. We've got a heading now about 225. Um, I think our target heading was 224. So we're well on course. We're 26 nautical miles out from the VOR. So we're halfway there. Actually, hmm. 
we have to climb over that so let me not descend anymore But that elevator is sensitive. Put in just a touch. I mean, just like my thumb is on the wheel, and I just like touch the wheel, and I'm just might need to decrease that sensitivity a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the throttle the rest of the way up for now, because we those mountains up here like an eye level or so so I think I might I definitely need to hold on to the altitude I have and possibly need to climb a little bit more to get over that They've got a heading of 226. It appears from the dial that I'm a bit to the right, but I'm not off course, so I don't understand why that would be. Kind of see this this isn't perfectly lined up. It seems to be off to the right a bit. But for now we have straight and level flight, climbing just ever so slightly and at the moment I'm okay with that because again it looks like looks like those mountain peaks are still pretty high up there. I'm gonna bank to the right just a little bit more because it, it that green line seems to be slipping farther to the right okay we'll go with that heading for a little bit We're flying a heading of 231 and if we are gonna land when we're just 50 yeah 50.7 nautical miles past the VOR that means to me I'm guessing that the, the runway must be just on the other side of that peak because we're only 10 nautical miles from the runway at this point. Yeah, see this is getting more on track so I guess we were just a bit off. Just 9 nautical miles out. You know what? That might be KTEX right there. No, that's that's actually a really interesting runway though. I've actually landed on that for fun because it's like it's on top of a plateau. I actually I think I've made that mistake before flying to KTEX thinking that that was the right one and it's not. That's actually I don't remember the name of that one, but I've I've written it down in my notes because it's an interesting little landing spot. There it's like a it's like right on top of a flat plateau. It's pretty interesting. Okay, now we're getting a bit off course the other direction, so let's bank to the proper heading. Boy, where is the airport at? I mean, we're just six or five nautical miles out at this point. I mean, it's got to be like right below us. Cut the throttle back. Oh, there it is. Wow. That's going to be fun. Okay, well, at least we're flying in the right direction, so we'll go out a bit. And then turn back in. Wow, look at that. There's a valley. Valley, this is going to be fun.
fact, let me bank about this way, turn this way. Go down a bit, turn in and come back in and try to actually land properly without just cramming the vessel into the ground again. Yeah, I picked all these airports because they were just interesting landing sites and, you know... Just makes for a fun fly around when you're, uh, you know, instead of just flying from one flat spot to another flat spot, you have all these mountains in the way, and like in this case, you know, you can barely, you can't even see the airport till you're right on top of it, because it's behind a hill, so. Okay, we're down to 12,800. And let's fly basically, I'm going to make that kind of that road as my landmark, go out to that road and then turn around and come back in. Okay. Take a sip here. What I might want to do for this one is maybe pick some spot out here. Maybe if there's a, if you look at the GPS, it kind of looks like there's a beacon or something there. So maybe I should make that the, kind of like an intersection, fly to that, and then know that once I'm at that intersection, then I need to turn, you know, straight around from that, and then that should be lined up with the, uh, with the runway. Okay, so we're about over to that road, so I'm going to turn sharply and bring up the uh, elevator trim. And the runways here were 9 and 27, so we'll be landing east on runway 9. Just putting in some more bank, that's too much spiral into the ground if I'm not careful. Still in our turn, we're at 145 degrees, so we've still got a bit to go. I guess this is a 10 degree bank angle, if I'm, if I'm reading that correctly. Okay, we're at 100 degrees, we're almost uh, turned toward... Pitch up. Okay, so somewhere out here... Okay, I see it, it's right there. Alright, now... So we'll fly, uh, you know, obviously a bit northeast to get on to the, actually now I kind of wish I had set up the ILS. This shouldn't be too bad. I mean, we'll, we'll have, I mean, we've got those hills right there, but we'll, it looks to me like we'll have plenty of time to bank uh, back in toward the runway. And we're at 11,000 feet, basically, so we still got to come, come down 2,000 feet. Let me set the barometer, make sure it's set. Okay, now we're at uh, about uh, 1,900 feet above ground. Got a pretty good descent rate here. Drop the flaps one 
one setting. Okay, got the runway in sight. We're a little low according to the uh, the lights. So bring back the elevator trim a bit. Okay, we got one white light now, so we are close to the correct altitude and descent rate. If I can land on Mars at uh, Mach 2, surely I can land on Earth at 100 knots. Gear down. Nine hundred feet above the ground. I think we might be slowing down a bit too much. Let me bring the throttle up. Yeah, we're too low. Let's uh, pitch up, catch up to the glide slope. Five hundred feet above the ground. All red lights, not a good sign at the moment, but we should catch up to the glide slope, hopefully. It's pitching up a bit more, so we're still too low. And I'm waffling a bit, which kind of tells me I'm near stall speed. Okay, we got the lights, so let's get ready to cut the throttle. Got gear down. Okay, don't crash, don't crash. Don't crash. Don't crash. <sighs> that is just aggravating. I mean, what am I doing wrong at this point? Trying to find a camera angle for for this. For one thing, I'm too far to the right. Well, maybe. It feels like I'm lower than I am. That's one problem I'm having. Okay, well, that's going to wrap it up for that leg of the journey. In the next flight, we're going to pick up from KTEX, and we're going to fly to fly to a KCEZ. That's a Kilo Charlie Echo Zulu, and that airport has a runway, uh, has an elevation just under 6,000 feet. It's 5,918 feet. It's uh, runway 0321. And it's over 7,000 feet long, which is even longer than this one. 
and we will and yeah, we'll probably yeah yeah we might do another VOR on that one it's the VOR would be uh, Charlie Echo Zulu it's 108.40 and it's 45 nautical miles to the VOR, and then it's only six nautical miles from the VOR to uh, key KCEZ. So that's a you know a, the, the longer part of the journey is to the VOR, and then it's just a quick turn down through the runway. I wonder if if that VOR gets me in line with the uh, runway. Maybe that's why I picked it. Anyway, uh, if you like the video, leave a uh, comment down below, and you know. Uh, if you have any thoughts on this, I guess you can let me know what I'm doing wrong, although I kind of can already tell what I'm doing wrong. But um, that's going to be it for this video, and I will see you next time.